In this video, we will solve a problem where we are given a 2D matrix or a 2D array and the numbers are sorted and we have to search in this. So numbers in the rows are all sorted and uh, so this increases in this order. So 1 is the smallest, then 7, it's increasing in this direction and in the next row, it's more than the last element here. So it's further increasing. So it's if you pick this row, first row, then second row, then third row, then still it will be sorted. So we have to search in this. So how can we search it? For example, if you see here, we are searching for 3 and it's present. So let's see how we will do it. It will be very similar to uh, the way we do a search in a 1D array, which is sorted, which is doing binary search. Of course, you can search element wise, but that is not efficient. So here we have row and column instead of just rows. So uh, first we need to figure out which row the number belongs. So by looking at this, so let's say you are asked to find 3. So what you will do, you will see that here 23 is the smallest element in this row. 23 is the smallest and this is more than the target, target value 3. So all the numbers will be more. So there is no point in searching in this row. So just by looking at one element, we are clear. Next we come here. We look at the first element. It's 10. So this is more than 3. So all the numbers will be more than 3. No point in looking here. Here we see that 1 is less than 3. Then we know that it might contain the number 3. So we check at the last element. It's more than this. So first element is less. Last element is more. So we are sure that if 3 exists at all, it should lie here. Similarly, if we had to search for 4, we would have narrowed down to this row because 4 is more than 1 and less than 7. So if 4 exists at all, it would be in this row only. So once we are, we found the row, we can do binary search, simple binary search in this row. But here uh, manually we were checking one by one. We took this row, this row and so on. So we can apply binary search here also. So we have this first one, last one. Take the middle, compare with that and so on. So uh, we will find out a row where uh, first element is less and last element is more. So if uh, this is uh, number of rows is uh, R and number of columns is C, then finding the row will take log R time then searching within that row, each row will have C elements, will take another log C. So overall it will be log R plus log C. And space, it will be O of 1 since we will be using some variables to keep track of the in indexes. So th this will be our approach. So let's see how we can do that. So we have a few examples. It can be true or false. 3 was present, but here 13 is not present. It's empty, so nothing will be present. So number of rows is matrix dot size. If it's empty, that is r equal to 0, then no point in searching. Return false then number of columns uh, so now let's find the rows so we will have r1 that is the first row 0 r2 last row that is uh, r minus 1 the index so this is size index will be from 0 1 less and then we will use a variable mid. So let's better define it here outside. So what is the mid row? R1 plus R2 minus R1 divided by 2. If matrix mid. So we are looking at the mid row and it's 
last element which is c minus 1 so if last element is less than target then everything will be less than target so if this last element let's say we are searching for 25 then we look this this is the mid row and we see that 20 is less than 25 so all the elements will be less than 25 in fact all the elements in all the rows above it will be less than 5 so there is no point in searching there so initially our first row pointer r1 was here r2 was here and mid was this one and we were searching for 25 so this 20 is less than 25 so everything above it will be less than 25 and everything to the left of it so we can directly move r1 here one pass to this so r1 equal to mid plus 1 so that is what we will write here what is the other condition else if first element if first element itself is more than target then everything to the right of it and below it will be more than target by the same logic that we just saw so no point in searching there onwards so move r2 above that else if none of these conditions satisfies then we found the row and we will keep it in r1 so mid is the actual row because none of these conditions satisfy that means uh, last element was more than or equal to target and first element was less than or equal to target which is what uh, exactly we are searching for the row that row for that row first element should be less than equal to target last element should be more than equal to target then if target exists at all that will be in that row so this is the third condition where we found the target so we can exit from this loop so uh, if even if you don't write it it should work but for some cases where if uh, let's say r1 and r2 have a difference of one then this mid will always be r1 and this will keep on repeating so that's why this break is important here now at the end of this loop we have the exact row which is in r1 where we have to do the binary search so another binary search so c1 equal to 0 c2 equal to c minus 1 while c1 less than equal to c2 and y equal to because c1 can become equal to c2 and that value might be the target so we have to do one more comparison so c1 c2 becomes equal that does not mean that we did not find we will compare one more time whether that's exactly equal to target or not we can use the same mid variable we don't no longer use it we will only be using r1 because that is the row So R1 is the row we are searching for mid is less than target then C1 equal to mid plus 1 simple binary search else if matrix R1 mid is more than target then C2 equal to mid minus 1 else if none of these satisfy that means this is exactly equal to target so else return true and if it exits out of this loop that is c1 has become more than c2 that is we did not find it so return false and let's see
and the solution is accepted and if we look at the time it's uh, 4 milliseconds so 99.61 so that's good we are on the top side so you you saw some uh, vertical bars so the most of the time was more than our solution because they may be they may not have optimized for log n plus m or log r plus c log r plus log c now let's do the same in java and we will hardly need to change anything apart from this and the java solution is also accepted and here also we are right on top finally we will do it in python 3 for the sake of completeness And the Python solution is also accepted.